Here's the question that came in. When we use data pump to copy one schema to another, we get warnings in the log file about virtual columns. But the virtual columns are actually successfully created, so is it possible to suppress these warnings? And sadly, it's a lot worse than you think. The reason those warnings come out, even though the virtual columns are created, are very important. So I'm going to create a couple of users, demo one and demo two. Demo one will hold all the data, uh, will give some appropriate grants so they can do all their stuff, give some quotas, do some writes on temporary so we can do data pump from each one to the other, and we're good to go. We'll create a table in demo one and create a few things in demo one actually, as copies of Scott. So demo one's got a table called EMP. It's got a function called get modified sal. It's just something that's going to take the salary and add 100 to it. And we'll add a virtual column to this emp table. So I've got a copy of scott.emp, a function, and here's my new virtual column. The new salary is generated, and it's going to be a call to this function, get the modified salary, which, as you can see, just adds one to the salary. So if I query it, here's my wonderful application, demo1.emp three columns that are normal columns plus a virtual column, which simply adds one to the salary. I'm super happy with this application in demo one. I'm thrilled. Now I'm going to data pump it out so I can put it into schema demo two. As we know, data pump can take a little bit of while to get going. So we've started on demo one. We're basically dumping out the entire schema. Off we go, tables, indexes, etc. And we're done. So there we go. We've unloaded the entire demo one schema. I'm happy with that. Now I want to load it into the demo2 schema. So it's just import on a data pump. Off we go, and off it goes. And we can see it got our table in there, but these are the warnings our customer was speaking about. You know, I got invalid identifier, alter table demo, modified. I got a whole lot of warnings. Let's go have a look inside demo2 and see what the state of play is. If I go look at the list of objects inside demo2, I got my table called emp, that's fine. I got my function get modified cell. So the two objects that were in demo one successfully made it into demo two. And we got these warnings about virtual columns. So maybe I just we're missing that. I'll just go add that virtual column back in. Maybe that's the workaround here. But this is the weird thing. It says, yep, you tried to add a column that already exists. So even though I got a warning saying I couldn't add the virtual column, it appears that column is actually there. So Let's have a look at demo2.emp. And as we see, yes, there is that column new cell. So the virtual column is there. Let's do DBMS metadata and get the, the full DDL for this table. So what have we got? We got emp no, et cetera. And here's my, yep, it's a new virtual column generated virtual. But where's the function? We created the virtual column but we dropped the definition that we wanted to bring across with us. It's gone, which is not so good because it looks like it's correct, but it's actually missing some vital components. The only way to get around this is to drop that column because it's obviously incorrect. Then we can add the virtual column now with the correct syntax we wanted, which is this get modified cell, and we're good to go. Now, I didn't dwell long on the warnings there. The reason it did this is when you create a virtual column in demo one schema that calls a function, the virtual column definition actually says call function demo one dot function name. Therefore, when you bring that over to demo two, it is actually trying to say, I want to add a virtual column that calls demo one dot function name. It didn't have the privileges and therefore it refused to do it. It's just unfortunate. We actually still got the virtual column added. It's just obviously an incorrect definition. As I said, it's a bit worse than you think because we sort of end up with this half-baked virtual column that isn't really what we wanted, but you may just have some validation functions that say, is the column there? Yes, then we're good to go. Obviously, you really weren't. This is a known bug. We're working on a fix, but you just need to be very aware. I'm a big fan of virtual columns, especially you do virtual columns and make them invisible for adding new functionality without impacting applications. And the problem there is you could end up with this sort of um, corruption going on. As I said, be careful. One workaround that we've suggested for this customer is if you put those particular functions that are going to be used inside virtual columns into a common schema and let any schemas that are going to have applications reference them, let them call them, then of course, when you say, you know, in demo one, you'll say virtual column references common schema.function. And therefore, when it comes over to demo two, it will also and correctly reference 
common schema dot virtual function and everything will be fine. But that's obviously a relatively large undertaking if you've got a lot of these things floating around. Um, but one would imagine there shouldn't be too many PL SQL functions that are being used as virtual columns due to the context switch overhead. But there is workarounds available, but just a, a heads up there, be aware when you're using data pump with virtual columns, uh, you can get yourself into some grief. <laughs>